What if the person next to you was not who you thought they were? Imagine that person is Gary Ridgway, a name synonymous with terror and mystery, better known as the Green River Killer. This American serial killer cast a dark shadow over our nation with his chilling crimes. Convicted for the brutal murder of 49 women during the 80s and 90s, Ridgway turned the tranquil Seattle, Washington area into his personal hunting ground. But who was Gary Ridgway before he became the Green River Killer? Every story has a beginning, and Ridgway starts in a place you'd least expect. Born in Salt Lake City, Utah in 1949, Gary Ridgway was brought up in a middle-class family. The second of three sons, he was raised in a somewhat normal environment, surrounded by the love and care of his parents. His childhood, by all accounts, was unremarkable. He had a fondness for the outdoors and was known to be quite the Boy Scout. The Ridgway household was steeped in a strict religious upbringing, with the family regularly attending church services. Yet, beneath the veneer of normality, there were unsettling signs. As a teenager, Ridgway had a troubling interest in violence and showed a destructive attitude towards animals. These early warning signs, overlooked and underestimated, would later manifest in the most horrifying way possible. However, the seemingly ordinary boy from Salt Lake City was far from normal. As Ridgway grew older, a sinister side of him began to emerge. His twisted desires became a gruesome reality in the early 1980s with his first known victim, a young woman whose life was brutally cut short on the banks of the Green River. This was just the beginning of what would become a horrifying series of murders. Ridgway's victims were often young women, many of whom were living on the margins of society, struggling with poverty, addiction, or both. They were easy targets for a man who knew how to exploit their vulnerabilities. His method was chillingly consistent. He would approach these women, often posing as a good Samaritan or a potential client, then he would strangle them and discard their bodies in wooded areas or along the river. He cunningly used the vastness of the Pacific Northwest as his own personal graveyard, making it difficult for authorities to link the murders. The sheer number of his victims created a wave of terror throughout the Seattle area. Fear gripped the community as the body count rose, with Ridgway's killings reaching into the dozens. Yet, despite the growing sense of dread and the tireless work of investigators, he managed to evade capture for nearly two decades. Despite the mounting evidence, Ridgway remained elusive, hiding in plain sight. But even the most cunning predators can't hide forever. Gary Ridgway managed to elude capture for nearly two decades, leaving a trail of heartbreak in his wake. But in the year 2001, everything changed. Ridgway was finally apprehended, thanks to the tireless efforts of law enforcement and advancements in forensic science. The detectives on the case had been meticulously collecting evidence for years, hoping that one day technology would catch up. And it did. With the advent of DNA testing, the collected evidence finally led them to Ridgway. His trial was a media spectacle. Ridgway confessed to 49 murders, although he hinted at many more. The courtroom reverberated with his chilling words as he detailed his gruesome deeds, showing little to no remorse. His conviction brought relief to a community that had lived in fear for years, Yet the impact of his crimes lingered. The victims' families had to grapple with the reality of their loved ones' fates. The public was left shaken, questioning the safety of their own communities. In the end, justice was served, but the legacy of the Green River Killer continues to haunt us. What does Ridgway's story teach us? That monsters don't always hide in the shadows. Sometimes, they're standing right next to us. As we move forward, let us remember those we've lost and strive to create a world where such atrocities are a thing of the past.